A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints. The Servant of God, Constance, Queen of Aragon. Widow, Second Order. Sometimes wicked fathers have good children, and not seldom does it devolve upon saintly daughters to atone for the sins of their fathers. Constance fulfilled this mission. Her father was Manfred, son of the wicked Emperor Frederick II. Stepping into the footsteps of his father, he heeded neither the precepts nor the rites of the Church. He usurped the Kingdom of Sicily against the will of the Pope, to whom at that time the disposition of it belonged. In consequence, he was excommunicated by the Pope. His pious daughter Constance prayed much and performed severe penances and mortifications in order to obtain from God the conversion of her father. Gladly would she have made the sacrifice of her entire life in a strict order in atonement for his crime, but she was obliged to yield to the will of her father and give her hand in marriage to the king of Aragon. In the married state she endeavoured to sanctify herself and her children, a task in which she succeeded so admirably that her daughter Elizabeth, Queen of Portugal, is numbered among the saints of the Catholic Church. After the death of her husband, Constance was obliged to hold the reins of the government in Aragon for eight years. During this period, she edified all by her Christian love of enemies. Charles of Anion had robbed her father of his throne and of his life. He had also driven her cousin Conradin from his throne in Naples and had caused him to be executed in the marketplace of that city. Now the son of Charles was made prisoner by the fleet of Constance and taken to her residence in Barcelona. But far from taking revenge on the son of the enemy of her family, she visited him in prison and made his condition as easy as possible. Yes, when the royal court pronounced the sentence of death upon him, she refused steadfastly to have the sentence executed. How could I, said she, justify myself before my judge, who on the cross pleaded forgiveness for his enemies? After Constance abdicated, she entered the Order of St. Clair, in which she lived sixteen years devoting herself to prayer and the practices of penance until her saintly death in the year 1301. A Reflection on Love for One's Enemies Christ our Lord says, You have heard that it has been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies. Matthew 5, 38 and 43-44 In the Old Testament it was said that he who has done evil to another should be sentenced to suffer a like evil, and therefore it was said, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The scribes and the Pharisees, who interpreted Holy Scripture according to their own ideas, deduced from this text that personal revenge was justified, and that anyone could inflict on his enemy the same injury that he had suffered. Such revenge, says our Lord, is not in conformity with his doctrine. But I say to you, love your enemies. Let us marvel at the clear and sublime doctrine of Christ, and let us strive, like Queen Constance, to carry it out when the occasion arises. Consider that the world still adheres to the pharisaical principles of repaying like with like, because it is in accord with the inclinations of tainted human nature. Yes, it seems at times as if it were regarded as a disgrace to act otherwise. We do good and are friendly to those who act in the same manner towards us, but show hatred and enmity towards those who hate us. But our divine Saviour asks, Do not also the heathens this? Matthew 5.47 To us, however, he says, Do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who persecute and calumniate you, that you may be the children of your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5.44 To which group do you want to belong? to the heathens or to the children of God. Consider what should induce us to love our enemies. Our enemy himself may not deserve it, that is true, but our enemy is a child of God, even though he be an ill-bred one, and God wishes that we love him as his child, just as we still love our own ill-bred child. God will, without doubt, punish our enemy, as he in his wisdom sees proper, but we should, out of love for God, forgive him and do him good so that God may forgive us the wrong we have done against him. But if you will not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive you your offences. Matthew 6.15
Did not the Son of God give us the most beautiful example when on the cross he prayed for his deadly enemies? And our Heavenly Father lets his Son shine on the good and on the bad. Do we not go to the same table of the Lord with those against whom we have an aversion? Prayer of the Church Pour forth upon us, O Lord, the Spirit of thy charity, that those whom thou hast sated with the one bread from heaven, thou mayest in thy goodness make of one mind, through Christ our Lord. Amen.